Hi, I'm Jeffrey Knight with Ewing Irrigation, and today I'm joined by Mark Stulzos with Ryan Lawn and Tree, and Mark's going to show us how to winterize a sprinkler system. Okay, Mark, where I am from, we don't really worry about winterizing systems because we never really freeze. What is the big deal with winterizing systems for you guys? Well, further north here in the Midwest, we have extended periods of fairly cold temperatures and it can cause the ground to freeze as deep as two feet up to three feet even further north of here. So if you don't do a good job of getting all the water out of the pipes in the ground, you can have significant damage when you go to turn your system on again in the spring. Okay, so why not just use an automatic drain or, or just dig the dig pipes, bury them deeper? Installing the system deeper, we would have to trench lines three and a half, four feet deep to get it below the freeze line. That would add a tremendous amount of expense to the irrigation system. Automatic draining systems, are wonderful in a lot of aspects, but they waste a lot of water and they have the tendency to either fail open or fail closed, which can either lead to a high water bill or frozen and broken pipes. So what are some things we need to consider before we blow out a system with air? And walk me through that entire process. For us, the primary considerations we look at are, do you have any above ground piping? Do you have an RP backflow or a PVB backflow? Okay. Those are always above ground and damaging those due to freeze, freezing temperatures will cost significantly more than what it costs to winterize your system okay. appropriately. Some people will have their systems completely underground with a double check backflow, and for those you can usually wait till later in the year to winterize them. Temperatures below 30 degrees are a red flag that you need to get your system shut off and blown out immediately. Okay. Anything below that can cause damage, cracked pipes, broken backflow preventers, any and all of those. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the water off in the basement, and, or depending on your sprinkler system, it might be in the front yard or the side yard in, in a pit in the ground. Okay. Once we shut the water off, then we can hook up our air compressor and blow all the water out of the sprinkler system. Okay, now how much pressure is it gonna to take to blow that system out? Typically, we run our, our compressors at 80 PSI. Anything above 80 PSI, and you have the potential to damage your irrigation system. Okay. Now I have, I know I have a compressor in my garage right now that will generate 80 PSI. Why can't I just use that? It doesn't look anything like this guy right here. Well, the typical homeowner air compressor absolutely can generate 80 PSI and more, but it cannot generate the same volume that one of these compressors can. And the volume allows us to do it one, more quickly, and two, more thoroughly than the homeowner's compressor okay. can. So if I did it with my compressor, I'll be out there forever trying to blow out the system. It takes significantly longer and it has the potential to not get all the water out, yes. Okay, well I'm excited to do this. Let's go get started. Excellent. All right, here we are at the backflow device and I see the connection point for the hose. So are we ready to just hook it up and go? Not quite yet. First thing we need to do is go downstairs and turn the water off. Okay. Depending on the house or the residence, you may have your shut off in the basement or in a crawl space, or the other option is in the yard by the water meter, usually in a valve box. Okay, the water's turned off. Now can we hook up the hose? <laughs> just about. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this off to isolate the backflow and not allow air to go backwards through it. Okay. We're getting really close <laughs> now. The next step is we're gonna remove the blowout cap. All right, be careful when you remove the cap. Sometimes there can be a lot of pressure behind these, so do it slowly. Then we need to connect our adapter so that we can connect to the hose. All right, and your favorite part, let's get it connected. There we go. Now, Jeffrey, keep in mind, one thing that is really important is that we connect after the backflow preventer. All too often, people will connect through the different test cocks here on the backflow or to another point on the other side of the backflow. Running air through a backflow preventer can cause significant damage to the backflow. Okay. Also, we have the hose connected. Um, we can't just turn the compressor on and build up pressure on a closed system. No, no, absolutely. If the air doesn't have anywhere to go, it can burst pipe. So the first thing we're gonna do before we fire up the compressor is go turn on the controller to zone one, and then we're gonna manually go through each individual zone until all the water's out of the system. Okay, perfect. Well, now we're to the compressor. Okay. First thing we need to do is make sure that this ball valve 
it's cracked slightly open. And then we can go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. All right, let's do it. Okay, so behind us is the last zone that we have to blow out. And I've noticed that you're not waiting until the heads run clear with air before you advance to the next zone. So what are you doing on that? Exactly. When they first come on, a steady stream of water will come out. Okay. And then as the air continues to work through the system, it'll turn from a mist to a fog. The goal is to have every head spraying a fog. At that point, the zone's done. Okay, and when this final zone is done, how are we finish, how do we finish this up? We head back to the compressor, turn it off, and then we'll go back to the backflow and finish up there. Okay. Okay, looks like we're back where we started. Now, I understand that we've got everything cleared out from the discharge side of this backflow device out to the heads. What are we gonna do about the water that's in the line from the point of connection through the backflow device to that valve? Great question. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect the line going back to the compressor, and we're gonna remove the adapter and then we're gonna put the cap back in, but we're just barely gonna put it in in case any water gets into the, the line here over the course of the winter, it has a spot to get out, okay. okay? Then for the backflow preventer and the supply line, first thing we're gonna do is take each of these ball valves and turn them a quarter turn. And that allows any water that might be trapped on the outside of the ball valve an opportunity to get out okay. and prevent any cracking of the ball valves. We do the same thing with each of the four test cocks because they're little ball valves. And it will also give the water an opportunity to drain out if any does get in there. It's really easy for a homeowner to accidentally turn the water on and put, introduce water back into it. Finally, we need to head downstairs to the point of connection and open up the drain so that we can get the little bit of water that's left in the supply line out. Okay, well Mark, thanks for the lesson. You can see that winterizing your system is crucial to maintaining your irrigation system in colder climates. Not doing so can lead to broken pipes, damage to your backflow device, and costly repairs. For more information, contact your local Ewing branch or visit us online at ewingirrigation.com.